Good afternoon to one and all present here. Shri Yipendra Kanji Bhai Chauhan Ji Ka Mein Baut Baut Swadat Karti Hoon. Karu Institute of Social Work Mein Aani Ki Lai Kamish Kam Samayi Mein. Mere Aani Ji Ke Baat Mein Di Shri Kanji Bhai 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 Ji Ke Baat Mein Di Shri सर आप कितने कम समय में आपने अपना कहानी हमको दी कि आप यहाँ पे हमारे साथ में उपस्थित होंगे पहली बात ये है इसके लिए तो पहले तो मैं आपको शुक्रिया कहना चाहूँगी और सर के इंट्रोडक्शन के बारे में मैं बहुत भी कुछ भी कहूँ तो भी बहुत कम है लेकिन फिर भी जो मुझे थोड़ा कुछ समय छोटे थोड़े से समय में पता चला है सर के लिए वही मैं बताना चाहूँगी Sir, skill development in CSR division of people life is working since seven years. And Sir's qualification is BTEC MBA and rural management from IRMA, from ARM, IRMA. So, Sir, we can start with this and Sir, we can start with this webinar. Thank you, Neha Ji. Thank you, Neha Ji. Thank you, Neha Ji. Neha Ji, somehow, you were not clearly audible. Am I audible? Am I audible clearly? Yeah, sir, you are audible. I don't okay, know my okay. voice was not clear. Okay, and so, uh, sir, am I audible now? Yeah, now it's better. Now it's better. Okay, and uh, 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 what language should I use? Should it sir, be Hindi, uh, English, or Gujarati? What, what, sir, what, uh, what students? Anything, sir. Student, are we are having international students also. We are okay, so it should be in English, no? Yeah, it should. Then it is okay. nice, preferable, but if it is in Hindi, then it is okay. Okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, so, good afternoon to all. And uh, as Neha Ma'am said, my name is Hitendra, and uh, I am part of the social development sector for the last uh, 22 years after completion of my post graduation from Irma Anand. And uh, I've been part of uh, PD Life CSR for the last uh, seven years, almost seven years. And I am primarily looking after their skill initiative uh, under uh, corporate social responsibility. Uh, this will be a broad flow of my presentation. Uh, I believe that any social development initiative needs to be kind of assessed in three parameters. One is the relevance of the objective. So I will start with the relevance of our work, relevance of, of our objectives. Of our work, so that will be the first part of my presentation. Secondly, I will briefly talk about uh, broad strategies. So, how our strategies are fit into present economic and social context. So that I will cover. And lastly, I will talk about uh, our activities and impact. So, uh, I also need to talk about our activities, how much appropriate they are, how much effective they are. And in a broader context, what has been the impact? So that will be uh, my flow of presentation. Now, if I talk about skill development, uh, there has been a lot of efforts from government and for the last uh, maybe 13, 14 years. And there is a lot of impetus which, which is being provided. Of course, from government side, but also from corporate side also. And uh, in 2009, the very first time, it was very first time that skill development department was uh, separately created at government uh, from uh, uh, central government. So that was the very first initiative and also a uh, skill, development, skill development policy was developed. That was also first policy of that kind. And in 2014, after, uh, uh, after NDA came to the power, a separate ministry was created. So, Ministry for Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. So, there is a separate uh, uh, ministry we have right now and the uh, policy was also revised. So, there has been a lot of efforts from government side and uh, uh, there is a reason for such efforts. So, I will start with my, uh, uh, I will start with uh, my presentation of why skilling is important. In fact, we all know that India is a uh, is huge country and we have, I think, second largest population in the world. But at the same time, we have the youngest population. In fact, uh, 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 you people may be aware that we are uh, uh, second in terms of uh, uh, our average age. 
that our average is right now is 29 years, which is very young. If we compare that with China, which has around 45 years, USA, which has around 40 years, Canada, which has around 48 years. So most of the uh, uh, developing countries, developed countries, they are aging and India is very young. And this phase is called demographic dividend. So right now we are in a phase of demographic dividend. You must have heard about this term earlier too. And uh, in fact, when China's growth story was there during 70s, 1890s, uh, at that time, China was very young. And uh, there are many factors responsible for their growth stories. But one of the reasons is considered as their young age population. The same for Japan. When Japan had young population, they had a lot of, they made a lot of progress in terms of uh, their economic development. So India has also a great opportunity and uh, India has such a huge population. In fact, uh, we have around 65% population between the age of 15 and 65. Now 15 and 65, this age group is called as working age population. So we have a huge working age population, 65% uh, of the total population and this population has a potential of uh, uh, providing workforce to not only industry to not only india's industries but also at global level because there is a larger larger level uh, estimates that uh, at global level in next five years or so the working age population will be decreased while in, while in india there will be huge working age population so indian youth has uh, a, a potential to fulfill those needs uh, so, and also, if you talk about individually, if you talk about the family, then a decent livelihood, that is very much important for, for, uh, for life of any individual. So, to earn a decent livelihood, uh, uh, skilling is very important. And we have a huge working population, they need to be skilled so that they can fulfill the industry's need. Because when it comes to skilling, India is lagging uh, uh, very much behind compared to other countries. In fact, we have only 5% of the working age population which is formally skilled. This is this figure is very low. If you compare this with USA, which has around 40%, around 45% uh, are skilled people uh, amongst their work, working age population. Same way, there are countries like South Korea, which has 85% of the people who are skilled, formally schooled. So we have only 5% people who are skilled. And amongst these 5%, only 2% are formally skilled. Other 3% have somehow got acquired skill, but by other means, by not, uh, uh, they don't have any certificate. So they have not went to any training center and uh, uh, got training, but they have somehow learned. Uh, that is also important, but we have only 5% population which is skilled. So there is a huge need of skilling. And government is also realizing this. So government has made a lot of effort. As I mentioned earlier, separate ministry has been created, separate policy has been developed. And uh, in fact, if you people are aware about this, the latest uh, uh, education policy, uh, that has, that uh, there is a separate chapter on vocational training. Now, in fact, uh, there are efforts to basically uh, incorporate the vocational training uh, into the mainstream education. So there has been a lot of effort. And uh, government is also realizing that uh, for any skilling effort to, to, uh, to be succeed, there is a need to uh, involve industry because at the end of the day, it is industry who is going to take these graduate people, who, the people who are skilled. It is the industry who is going to employ, the, employ them. So there has to be a strong linkage between skilling process and industry. And government also realizing it. Government has already realized it. And uh, in fact, government has created a separate body called NSDC, which is National Skill Development Corporation. Now this body has created only to uh, to involve industry, only to make efforts to involve industry in the larger skilling process. Uh, if I talk about uh, a government's skilling mechanism, then uh, uh, one thing which comes in everybody's mind is Industrial Training Institute. Uh, at uh, All India level, we have around 15,000 ITIs, more than 15,000 ITIs, which are basically imparting uh, a skill, skill training. And they have capacity uh, between 25 to 35 lakhs uh, youth every year, which is also uh, uh, not sufficient because, if you know, we have uh, every year, uh, we have 
1.2 crore youth which are coming in coming in the economy so we have requirement of 12 million uh, uh, people who needs to be skilled every year so uh, as i i was uh, 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 mentioning earlier the government has been making lot lot of efforts and government's main mechanism for skilling or main instrument for skilling is industrial training institute government has also developed many schemes to involve uh, 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 investees in the skilling process and uh, well, we are part of uh, uh, skill development process uh, now pedilite has a you must have you must have heard about pedilite we make products like uh, Heavy pulp, heavy wheat, MC, the the range of products of Dr. Tixit. So these are some of our products, and we are market leaders in Adesi and Sealant. So uh, uh, and uh, we have a particular strategy that wherever wherever we work, we also work with the end user. So if I talk about the heavy pulp, then end user primarily are carpenters. So we are closely working with carpenters. We have a network of carpenters. Which has around 1.25 lakh uh, carpenters at the uh, volunteer level, and uh, there is a platform called FCC Heavy Pulp Champions Club, which has been created. Same way, uh, our product MCL, which is being primarily consumed by plumbers, so we have also a network of plumbers. Doctor Fixit, which is primarily consumed by construction workers, we have also a platform for construction workers. So we have been working with uh, these people. And uh, these people need to be skilled. That's what that's what we realize that they they people lack formal skilling, and uh, that's why we kind of uh, become part of a skill ecosystem. And uh, in fact, uh, right from the start, we were very clear that we would be working with government. And uh, working with the government has provided us opportunity. It has basically given us a larger space. In fact, right now in Gujarat, we are working in all 33 districts. Uh, we have our ITIs and other initiatives in all 33 districts of Gujarat. Same day, we have been working in Rajasthan. We have just started our initiative in Himachal Pradesh, Maharashtra. So uh, uh, this 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 whole uh, space we have received. That's only because we have been working with government, and uh, also working with government provides us opportunity to kind of influence at policy level. So that opportunity we we wanted to have, and that's why we are working with government. Also, it has been a kind of a, I would say that uh, it has been a, a also mutually benefiting process. Uh, uh, it has been a win-win situation even for government. They have also uh, kind of uh, they are getting help of uh, the professional team. We have we are around 50 percent team, and we are working with uh, without any uh, without any interest of PD like PD that has no. Uh, i would say uh, 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 profit motive or any, uh, any 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 interest in this whole uh, economic interest in this whole initiative so gover uh, from government and also government and also they have got help of this professional we have a 50 members team and which is helping government in all the parts uh, this has been the uh, uh, the broad uh, i would say journey of pd life i want to talking about uh, details in this project because some of the projects i will be covering in later part of my presentation but i would just say that uh, this whole uh, the, 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 the 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 initiatives are organically linked and uh, uh, see for example when we started our skilling work uh, in 2014 we started with uh, two ITIs of Bhavnagar and Mohua in fact we started with the carpentry plumbing and construction for support in 2014 and based on the success of that initiative government kind of invited us to replicate the same model in 200 ITIs of Gujarat so the genesis of work of 200 ITIs that was started with the two ITIs in Bhavnagar district same way we in 2014 we adopted one KVK that was in Kalsar KVK of Bhavnagar district that was the very first our initiative of Kalsar uh, of Kalsar level that Kendra and In fact, in 2016, government invited us to become knowledge partner in 500 kilometers of Gujarat across all parts of across all the talukas of Gujarat. So, same way, we are industry partner in one skill during 2018-19 one skill competition. Right now, we are industry partner in three uh, uh, skills. So, uh, so this is also indicating of the fact that uh, we have been recognized for our work. There has been a kind of appreciation from. Also from government end. Uh, 
Now I'll talk about some of our key projects. And uh, one of the key project, uh, projects is basically promotion of carpentry, plumbing and construction trades in government ITIs of Gujarat. Uh, now why carpentry, plumbing and construction? In fact, when we started our work in 2014, uh, see, one thing which we realized that there is a huge demand of carpenter and plumbers and also construction technicians, skilled construction technicians. In fact, you could, you, you could also must be experiencing that whenever we want a good plumber or a good carpenter, it is very difficult to find. So there is a huge demand, but at the same time, there are very few takers. There are very few takers from ITI. There are very few ITIs. There are very few ITIs who are willing to run these posts. And even if if there are few ITIs, if there were around 20 ITIs who were running these courses, there are very few takers in terms of trainees, in terms of students. Students didn't want to become a, a carpenter or plumber. Even today, there is a larger economic and social context because of which the people don't want to become plumber or carpenter. See, firstly, it's, it's, it is a blue collar job. And even within blue collar job, things like electrician or fitter or computer operator, they are they are considered as better options than plumber or carpenter. So we realized that there is a need to popularize this trade. There is a need to make efforts so that there are more number of plumbers, there are more number of carpenters which, which, are, fit, which are being fit to the industry. So there is a need to uh, there is a need to produce more carpenters, plumber and customers and technicians. Of course, electrician is one course which is very popular. So there not much efforts are needed, but still we are supporting because it is also part of our larger ecosystem. Uh, and uh, we have been working at the both the end. When I say both the end, it's we are working with the government, we are working with suppliers, we are working with ITIs, we are working with the ITI mechanism. At the same time, we are also working with the general community. We are also working with the demand side. We are working with the students. So we have been working with supply side and as well as demand side. And uh, as I said, the initial piloting was undertaken in Mogwa and uh, there are two ITIs in 2014. And for that, a formal MOU was signed for three years and it was again reviewed in 2018 and 2021. Now we have been supporting both long term and short term courses. Now when I say long term course, it is primarily one year course. One year courses are considered as a long term course. And when I say short term courses, they are primarily starts from few weeks to few months. So they start from 15 days to 20 days to 3 months, 4 months. So they are short term courses. And uh, they both cater to the needs of uh, different kind of crafts, when I would say. Because the one year course, which also covers the basic aspects, the, the that course is being preferred by the face and pass or tenth fail student, while the short term courses are primarily preferred by the by the experienced craftsman who wants to sharpen their skill on a particular aspect in a particular aspect, or who wants to learn certain things in a structured manner. So they generally the experienced craftsmen they generally come for short term courses. Uh, these are some of the photos of our work and. Uh, when we started our work, the very first step uh, which we did was review of the course. And uh, when we reviewed the course, we realized that there are many aspects which are part of larger industry. Now, there are many things which is very much prevalent in the uh, in the industry, but which is, it is not. But, but those components are not part of the formal syllabus. So 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 what happens is, the, for example, water cooling. Now, waterproofing is very much important right now, but it was not part of the syllabus at that time. So, so, so there were other parts also. Right now, we are talking about the green technology for carpentry, but it was not part of the syllabus earlier. So, what we did is we kind of reviewed the syllabus. A committee was set up amongst the, among the experts from PD Light and government, and they reviewed the course. And the additional modules were developed. So, apart from the regular course, the students were also study, studying that uh, additional module. And those additional modules were about 15 days, 20 days. In fact, for construction course, the separate course was developed and it was uh, 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 recognized by government of Guja. So a separate course was developed and that course is being presently being run in many of the ITIs. Uh, and uh, 
in fact uh, the, the larger focus of our work is so so that was the first activity to review the course and uh, the, the the focus is on the whole life cycle of the students so we start with the student counseling when the admission process is going on we help them during their uh, uh, classes we train the trainers we, we have we provide them educational material educational material is, that part is also very interesting because when we started our work in 2013 14 we realized that there is not a single uniform book for iti trainers there is, there are there are certain there are certain engineering books which 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 with the, with the students and trainers of iti's were using and uh, there was some material which was not in gujarati language so what we did is we developed a easy to understand local language uh, reading material for students and uh, uh, teachers trainers uh, in fact in 2017-18 we also renovated a classroom and workshop of down like an iti uh, so as i i mentioned earlier based on that experience of two iti in 2000 15 government invited us to replicate the same model in 200 ITS. Now, now the focus is on three aspects, three critical aspects. One is to promote industry linkages. As I mentioned earlier, industry linkages is very much important because at the end of the day, the graduates from skilling institutes are going to go in the industry. So industry exactly knows what kind of people they want, what should be the ideal process of skill development training. So, so for promoting industry connect, what we did is one is we reviewed the course and added the industry relevant component. That was the first thing which we did. What we are also doing that as as I said earlier, we have been working with carpenters, plumbers, construction technician, and we strategically invoke those carpenters, those plumbers in training of ITIs. So what what is happening is that those carpenters they are every month they are going to the uh, uh, ITI. They are interacting with the students. They are basically talking about their experience, what is happening in the market, what are the biggest challenges. If somebody wants to start their business or somebody wants to do job, what are the things which which, which one should keep in mind? What kind of training they should be doing? And uh, that was also a kind of win-win situation also for those carpenters, those plumbers who used to come who, who are coming to the ITI because whenever they want. Uh, 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 carpenter or plumber for their workshop or their work site, they, 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 they always take up the, the ITI graduates because they, they have worked with them for the one year. They know which students are good and which, which students they need. So from them also, it has become very easy to identify good workers for their workshop and their work site. They also take students to their work site and workshop so that the students get practical exposure. We have also uh, uh, kind of promoted students in participate in taking participation in various industry uh, exhibitions. So that is the first component to promote industry connect, industry linkage in training. Second part, strengthening training delivery mechanism. Now, ITI, government ITI, we have been primarily working ITI, and they have their own way of working. And uh, we are trying to uh, uh, strengthen that training delivery mechanism. And how we are doing is, one is training of trainer. We have been doing regularly training of trainer, not only on technical aspect, but as well as on not technical aspects like training methodology and our communication skills. So those things are also being covered. We have also been providing need-based support of tools, equipment, raw materials. So those kind of support is also being provided. And lastly, we have been closely working with the trainees. We have been kind of supporting trainees so that they can, they can have access of quality training. And that we do through enrollment campaign, providing them easy to understand educational materials. And uh, we have in fact a uh, district supervisor. We have one district supervisor in each district. So we have 33 staff members in all the districts of Gujarat. And what they do is they do they go to the ITIs at least three to four times in a month, at least once in a week. They interact with the students, they interact with the principal, trainers, industry, local industry people. So they interact with all those people, identify with their needs and also address for their concern, identify their concern and address those concerns. So they are field level kind of mechanism of us to implement our projects. So that is also a very big component because there are a lot of issues at the ITI level. For example, tools equipment has not come because the government process is a kind of, kind of, kind of there is a long process of uh, 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 
uh, buying of tools, equipment, and raw materials. So, what we do is we provide uh, uh, tools, equipment for that gap, for that time, the time being support is being given. Same way, uh, for example, if some students have not received scholarship, and we go to the ITI, talk to the principal, we require the go at any level level or at the journal level and then try to resolve that issue. We do monitoring if some trainer is not coming regularly, we take up that issue. So those kind of hand only support is being provided. Uh, one of our key initiatives is I would say environment campaign. As I mentioned earlier, there are very few takers. There's, uh, there are very few ITAs which are running the course. When we started our work, there were only 20 ITAs. Right now, we have reached to around 60, 65 ITIs. So that is one impact we have done at a broader level. And uh, But even at ITI level, there are very few students who are who wants to become plumbers. So what we do is, during the admission time, we go to the village, we, we go to the Kadiyanaka, we go to the market, uh, we go to the shops, and uh, we use IC material and promote our courses. We basically interact with the students and their family members about the importance and relevance of, 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 of these trades and we kind of uh, help them in uh, taking admission in these trades. So these are some of the pictures, pictures of our enrollment campaign. Uh, one interesting thing which we have done just now is to promote women plumbers. Uh, in fact, uh, if I talk about all India figure, even if I talk about all India figure, it's around 20%, 20% are the women IT training, which is very much low, <laughs> even at the broader level, at Indian level, if I talk about the labor, labor force participant, participation rate, for women it is only about 23%. So there is a huge need to promote women in the formal economy. They are part of informal economy at household level, but they wish to be part of formal economy. So there are estimates that uh, there will be huge jump of GDP if we can strengthen women's participation in formal economy. Okay, for example, uh, uh, the men's labor force participation is around 73%, while women is 23%. So there is a huge need to promote women's participation. And when it comes to women, there is a stereotyping. So even if you talk about skilling of uh, girls, if you talk about skilling of women, then people generally talk about stitching and uh, uh, beauty parlor and uh, computer and all those courses which are considered as quote unquote soft courses. They don't talk about fitter or plumber or carpenter. So what we are trying to do is that though women also need to be part of hardcore uh, uh, skill development courses, hardcore business. So we have signed an MOU with one of the training institutes called NSTI Institute. It's a central government sponsored institute and there we are will be trying to promote women plumbers. And this will be a kind of very first initiative at the that level to promote women to work. This MO has just signed. It has it has been signed on 8th of July only. Uh, for electrician trade, I, I as I mentioned earlier, uh, electrician trade is one of the most popular trade, but because we have our expertise, so that is also part of our mandate. So there also we have been providing support like training of trainers, industry exposure visit, and we have also reviewed the course and additional module of 12 has been introduced in the IPI. This has been the broad coverage in Gujarat. As I said, 2014-15, we started with the two ITIs, with the 56 students. Right now, we have been working with 178 ITIs. More than 9,300 students are being covered. In total, 38,000 more than 38,000 students are being covered right now. Then it, it has been covered in the last seven, eight years. Uh, another key project of our is to basically partnering industry, uh, uh, partnering ITIs as industry partner. Uh, government has a scheme called PPP, Public Private Partnership. Under this scheme, they kind of invite industry uh, to uh, to manage industrial training institute to manage government ITIs and for that they constitute uh, an IMC which is, which is called as Institute Management Committee. Now this IMC has all financial, all administrative, all governance power, and they this this particular body 
is basically given with the responsibility and also authority to run the ITI. And idea is that and this IMC is being headed by industry. And so right now we are in fact a, 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 a industry partner in 14 ITIs of Gujarat. So there are various schemes. One is CPP, that is Central Public Private Partnership, State PPP. Then there is also World Bank supported new scheme called Spive scheme. But uh, these all schemes have the kind of similar objective in terms of uh, 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 giving industry opportunity to run an ITI. And uh, apart from this IMC, uh, government has also been providing them two crore of rupees, IMC. And this two, two crore rupees has, is being spent by IMC, Institute Management Committee, which again, I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, is headed by industry. And uh, these ITIs are located in various parts like from Bangladesh, Surat, Ahmedabad, Kashi to Nausari, and Vatnagar. Vatnagar is, as you people must be aware, it is hometown of our honorable Prime Minister. That ITI was specifically given to us considering our previous experience. And there is a lot of extra effort which is, which is, which is being provided to, which is being given to this particular ITI. Now, here the focus is on three aspects. One is to promote basically to identify and promote need-based relevant courses. What we do is, whenever we become industry partner in any ITI, we do a formal survey, a formal study of surrounding area. We try to identify the community aspiration, community needs, at the same time the industry requirement for skilled labor. And based on that understanding, we promote the courses. Uh, for example, we have one ITI which is uh, in Ahmedabad, it's Rani, Rani, Kuta Rani ITA. There we have promoted uh, automobile sector because it's Ahmedabad city, there is a huge demand of automobile sector professionals. Same way, there is one ITA in Chakrabad uh, uh, town, which is in Saurashtra uh, region, which is part of Amrevi district. There we have promoted uh, agriculture sector. Uh, same way, there is a uh, there is one ITI in Surat, so such an ITI. There we have promoted electrician sector. So we have been trying to identify the local relevant uh, sector. Then second is to strengthening institutional systems. As I mentioned earlier, these are government institutions, and we basically first try to create certain systems and then try to strengthen those systems. Then I talk about systems is things like procurement policy, things like uh, how to take feedback of the students, training of trainers. So those, those on those aspects we work with the closely with the ITI develop systems and strengthen those systems. And thirdly, to strengthen institutional infrastructure. As I said, government has given two crore of rupees to spend on those infrastructure. And when, when I say uh, ITI infrastructure, it of course covers things like tools, equipment, raw material, but it also covers supporting infrastructure like placement cell, like uh, uh, ITI campus, ITI lawn, I would say. And so those things are also being covered. Uh, there is a one photo of, uh, one of our ITIs, which is the ITI. Their focus is on art and craft and food courses. Uh, apart from these structured uh, programs, we have also been providing kind of need based support to the ITI. These are government ITIs. They do have constrained in terms of uh, uh, their program. So at times, uh, we need to be kind of flexible and provide them provide them need-based support. For example, in Bhavnagar, in Bhavnagar district and also in some other ITIs, we provided them new grant car because uh, we realized that there is a huge demand of drivers and these ITIs are, are not, not able to run motor driving courses because they don't have car. So we provided six care cars same way, we have also provided a kind of toolkit to women graduate trainees. Uh, we have provided them many tickets and sewing machines so that they can start their own work uh, after graduation from ITI. We have also kind of uh, developed a very good uh, science and mathematics uh, lab in the, one of the ITIs, and it, it, was, uh, it was so good that uh, in fact, when directors came and when, when we visited the lab, he in fact kind of instructed all the ITIs to replicate the same model. And this, this, this model was created with the help of Vikram Sarabhai Science Community Center. So with, with their support, we developed this science and, uh, science and maths lab. Uh, so apart from ITI, we have also been working with KVK. Now KVK is a very Gujarat specific, unique uh, 
skilling mechanism it was uh, started by that time chief minister of gujarat and presently prime minister of gujarat ji in 2009 and the broadly idea was that uh, the iti is a primarily at the block level at taluka level and these kvks are at panchayat level so they realized that there is a need to promote skilling at panchayat level also and also uh this panchayat level women would be the major beneficiary that was also kind of conceived that uh, for women members it will be very difficult to go to the taluka center for all women members it is very difficult so 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 the kvk was created and kvks are kind of smaller uh, a skill development center if i if i compare them with the itis they generally have two three or four courses and they have three four five rooms uh, small structure and uh, we have four five six seven team members and because those kvks were created in 2009 and uh, in fact it won prime minister's award for excellence in 2011 12 and as, as i mentioned uh, earlier pd light has been involved as knowledge partner in fact since 2019 we have also been assigned responsibility of third party introduction events uh again we started our work with the one kvk of kalsar kvk See, in fact, when it comes to IK, we started our piloting. We did our piloting from Bhavnagar, same way. Uh, from from TVK Center also, we started our piloting in Bhavnagar, because Bhavnagar is the place where most of our CSR initiatives are there. So there we have a kind of supporting infrastructure. So so that's why Bhavnagar was very first in terms of both ITIs and KVKs. so we did a survey to understand community need and based on their those needs support was provided next year other 12 kvks were given and in 2016 500 kvks were given to us now the role uh, role was basically one is to diversify the courses because because when we realized that there were only three sectors which were being covered in the kvks because uh, in technology computer course and beauty parlor these were the three courses which were i think 85% of the kvks had only these three courses so we realized that there is a need to promote a need to diversify uh, 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 this kvks we have also developed a very good mis it was such a comprehensive comprehensive mis that uh, even government used to use that uh, mis for their planning and monitoring purpose we also uh, help government in developing courses we did skill gap survey Uh, develop post calculation post post calculation and we also digitize the course and in 2019 the role of the third party inspection agency was given uh, we have a science city in bhavnagar there we in fact uh, introduce course things like videography photography same way in harbat hospital we have a hospital in bhavnagar uh, taluka of uh, bhavnagar district there we initiated uh, health related courses like bedside assistant dialysis assistant basic of anatomy So those courses were introduced. Agriculture, and this is again very interesting initiative which we did in 2019-20. And uh, there is a separate KVK. I know that uh, Krishi Vikas Kendra, which are primarily they are for skill development amongst uh, uh, farmers, but they are at district level. And what we realize is even today there are 45 percent of the population which are part of. Uh, Agriculture sector, so there is a huge need of, and also the agriculture sector where new technologies are being uh, uh, are coming. So there is a need to educate, need to train those farmers on this new aspect. So what we did there is our KVK, the social level of Kendras, can be instrumental in skilling of those farmers. So in 2019-20 we developed 50 agriculture courses, and in 10 KVKs we started the courses. 300 farmers were already covered. somehow unfortunately since 2020 march uh, kvks have stopped uh, corona virus and then for the last one year government has been there has been a kind of revamping of kvks so government is coming with a new strategy but right now the kvks have been stopped so so that work has stopped since 2019 we have also been making efforts to link skill development with uh, income generation activities training of trainers again it's a uh, it has been one of the critical components of our work model kvk the kalsar kvk was uh, kind of developed as a model kvk it was uh, we, we kind of 
thought that uh, this KVK would be uh, the design of this KVK would be replicated in all the IPAs. There we did was uh, what we did was to digitize some of the tools to use for development, training of uh, uh, on various mini fitness activities, and those kind of activities we used to do under KVK Kalsa. Collaboration, yeah, uh, again we have right now KVKs in 10 jails of Gujarat. We started with the one jail for inmates of uh, jail. So there KVK was started, and right now there are 10 jails which are running these courses. Uh, we collaborated with women and child development for destitute women, for the skilling of destitute women, for, with uh, agriculture department for agriculture related courses. So we are some of the collaboration we did. Health, uh, this is also uh, an interesting initiative because we realized that uh, we have been working with the adolescent uh, boys and girls, so we need to, because health is a critical component, so we develop a uh, small easy to understand the kind of module on health aspects and whenever our supervisor is going to the IPAs or KVK, they take a session of half, half an hour on various aspects related to health. NST partner in world skill competition. Now, I'm not very sure how, how much people know about world skill competition, but world skill competition, I would say, is Olympic of skills. Olympic for sports is generally organized after each four years, but this this we this basically organizes after two years. So this year it is going to be organized in Shanghai of China. Last year in 2019 it was in uh, uh, Kazan in Russia. So this is a global competition of skilling and uh, for that to identify the candidates at India level, so they start from the Taluka level. So Taluka level competitions are being organized and the winners of Taluka level compete at district level, winners at district level they compete at state level, winners at state level they compete at zonal level, winners at zonal level they compete at national level and the winners of national level competition they go to the they go to the compete at global level to represent India. So we are industry partner uh, in one skill, we were industry partner in one skill that was cabinet making in 2019. Right now, we are industry partner in three skills that is cabinet making, jewelry, and plumbing and heating. So, for these three skills, we are industry partners. And uh, the support is being provided in terms of uh, mobilization of candidates, training of trainers, training of sorry, candidates, their mentoring, organizing competition. In fact, uh, last time one of our candidates student second place even this time also one of our candidates uh, was silver medalist at national level and at both the occasions the respective cm last time it was rupani sir and this time it is a uh, uh, present uh, chief minister sir who basically felicitate the both really like and candidate uh, other initiative rpl recognition of prior learning this is also very interesting scheme of government this scheme as i mentioned earlier we have only five percent skilled and among these five percent, two percent are formally skilled. Other three percent are informally skilled, so they don't have certificate. So under this scheme, they can be assessed and given certificate. So what we did is we did RPL for 5,800 plumbers, and they were given certificate. We also did the assessment of maps, Mukhyamantri Apprentice Promotion Scheme in 2019. So and this was basically requested by the government, which we responded. We are also supporting ideas in organizing sports competitions. Uh, we also did a kind of a workshop on strategy for success for government officials of uh, Department of Employment and Training, including class one officers and also IS officers, and the two IS officers which were also part of this workshop. During the uh, Corona time, we in fact developed, uh, uh, we made a uh, around one lakh mask and uh, they were distributed to COVID workers and people. Photo of some of the activities, uh, some of the products were by carpentry students, uh, e-learning, training of trainers. Again, some of the photos of our activities, training of our supervisor, visit of uh, visit to the ITIs as industry partner, our supervisor interacted with the students. Overall, larger goal is to make uh, skill development mainstream because uh, there is an identity that uh, skill development is important, but for but only but only for some people. So my maids uh, or my drivers, daughter or son should go for uh, skill development, but not my 
better or why better? So that is the larger mentality, and you want to develop an alternate, uh, I would say, analogy. Rajasthan, we have also been working in Rajasthan in the same model which we are doing in Gujarat. So I want to talk about what we have been doing for ITIs. There are also similar type of activities are being done. This year we have started work in Himachal Pradesh. MOU has been signed. Our team has already been placed. We have done a kind of a need assessment survey. We will be starting with the three districts. That work has already started. Same way in Maharashtra. This year, this year MOU has been signed. And the need assessment exercise has also been done. And the, our field level initiative will start I think, in the next few weeks. Uh, this is uh, a very ambitious, I would say, initiative which has just started this year only. This is basically uh, 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 developing an advanced skilling center on carpentry and plumbing. Uh, what we realize is that uh, in ITI is a basic level, uh, a level of uh, skilling is being done for carpentry and plumbers. But if they want to develop their skills further, there are no institutions. For other trades, like for computer, there is a diploma computer course, there is a degree computer course. For electrician, there is a diploma, there is a degree. And also for somebody who is in mechanical courses, the EOC has also opportunity to study at higher level. But for carpenter, for plumber, there are no such institution. There are very few institutions. At that level, there, are, there is no such institution. So what we, we have done is we have we are developing uh, an advanced skilling center which have graduation, which, which will have diploma as well as, as a degree level courses uh, in carpentry and plumbing. And those, those courses will be affiliated to uh, Skill University, Government of Gujarat. As you people must be aware, the Skill University has just come up. And uh, in, during the month of March, we signed an MOU. We have already developed the courses. and. Uh, this year we will be initiating some sort of courses, but from next year, graduation and diploma level courses will be started. This is a very ambitious and very interesting initiative. Some of the media coverage about our training and uh, mass distribution and those aspects. This is a skill team. As I said earlier, we have 33 supervisors, one in each district. Of course, now we have a team in Himachal Pradesh, also in Maharashtra. So, so this is only Gujarat team, but also we have in other states of uh, India. Uh, capacity building, it is again a critical component for any initiative. So we do regular capacity of our members. Some of the visits from our head office. This is also interesting phenomena in a way because uh, our larger corporate people, they are also actively involved in the CSR initiative. It's not that only CSR people who are part of uh, CSR initiative. We try to involve our other divisions, the production unit, the maintenance unit, the marketing people. So we, we kind of involve them also uh, to one or another way so that they also become part of the larger CSR. Some of the recognition which we have received, one uh, which, in fact, uh, Vijay Rupani sir, the former Prime Minister, the Chief Minister, they, they felicitated us in, in 2019 for our contribution skill development. Same way the Chief Minister, then Chief Minister uh, in 2016, uh, Anadib NC came to Mowa and uh, visited KVK uh, Khalsa. GCSR in Gujarat, the state uh, CSR authorities, the uh, government body, they also kind of uh, recognized our work and uh, they also certified us. And uh, the former Chief Secretary, Dr. JNC, he also acknowledged our contribution in skill development during the vibrant uh, initiative in 2017. Uh, some of the future plans. Uh, now there is a demand from our uh, plants that we need to start the uh, CSR initiatives uh, in the nearby areas of our plants. So that we will be doing. So we will be intensively working in areas like Wapi and Surat and those regions where our plants are there. Then we have introduced bow bar. This is also again very interesting. Bow bar is basically developed by plastic waste, and we are trying to replace. We are trying to replace uh, wood with uh, these bow boards. So they are eco-friendly material. So uh, the, the, the experimental and piloting is being undertaken again in Bhavnagar. But this we would like to expand. This we would like to take to, to other ITIs. 
Thank you. So uh, I had an hour and I thought that I will be giving you around 20 minutes, but sorry, it's only 10 minutes. But we can always extend. I hope to extend. So I would like to invite your questions, your doubts, your feedback, your suggestions, your comments, whatever you want to, or if you want to know more about any certain aspects of my presentation or even on those things which are which has not been part of my presentation, you may please ask. Am I audible? Yeah, in fact, I request you all, you all are, you are going to become development professionals in next few months. So, I would really like to hear uh, your feedback, your suggestions, your comments, your overall impression, whatever you have in your mind. Don't think about uh, what you are going to ask. This, this. Yeah, yeah, please. Oh, I'm not able to hear you. You are not able to hear. Yeah. Hello. Am I able now? Yeah, yeah, now, now you are audible. Yeah. Sir, I was asking you that we like CSR projects and the competition in the different industries. But apart from this, we would like to understand any of the things that we any any of the person who has taken this uh, skill development pro program from uh -huh. uh, from your place and might have settled down and is doing very good in this uh, profession so any of the case studies if you happen to share with us we really appreciate that no? okay so i hope i was clear this time I have not been able to clearly understood, but I think you are asking about the, the, the placement aspect of the skilling process. Why, where these students are being placed? Yes, sir. I am asking for the placement as well as like, you know, after placement, the student has not left the job and is continuing with the job as well as then he is doing very good in the job. job. Okay, okay. So there are, there are infect students. So one of our ex-students who stood at second place. He was a silver medalist at national competition. So today, in fact, he is running his own business and he has around 10 other carpenters working uh, uh, along with him. Same way, there are students who have become faculty members in ITIs. So now they are trainers in ITIs. And there are also other, see, it's, it's a kind of informal sector. And so most of the trainees who are, who are passing they generally become, uh, I would say, self-employed. And many of them have, uh, they have become big. There are many plumbers or carpenters who have, who are earning, I would say, in lakhs per month. And there is a huge potential. If you, if you talk about the plumbing and carpentry, these are the sectors which, which are booming like anything. There is a huge demand. So, yeah, there are very good examples. There are very good case studies. Sir, the objective behind asking this question was just to know that there are a number of projects going by the government and as well as your company, right, in right industries. But what is the actual, not actual, but approximately a percentage of the people are like into the job, whatever you are claiming it to be? Okay, okay. Now, now you, are, you, are, you are asking very relevant questions because uh, uh, after skilling, how, how many people are getting employment? That is a big question. And uh, in fact, uh, the impetus of government to involve industry in the skilling process is primarily because of the reason that, uh, that uh, most of the graduates 
from itis are not employable quote unquote so if i talk about our initiative uh, we did a kind of uh, we we do track the students and uh, i would say that around 50 to 60% of the students are who have graduated as plumber or carpenter they are still into the business but many of them have stop working as plumbers and carpenters there are many students also because this particular course is for eighth pass students so there are many trainees who are who have failed in tenth so they take one year course and then they again start their uh, 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 academic career but then this is uh, this is a very critical question and the government has been making lot of efforts in fact the government has been promoting this apprenticeship this is also a kind of uh, uh, efforts to to make uh, trainees uh, uh, industry ready we in fact uh, developed uh, and uh, introduced additional module which is very much relevant to the industry as i mentioned earlier there are aspects like uh, water proofing which is not part of the construction technician course but which is very important if someone is coming in the construction sector so we provide them additional training on uh, on water proofing so whenever he or she pass he has that additional skill so yeah we make lot of efforts but still i would say there is a there are lots more efforts which are needed there are lots more efforts which are needed and see see, see the larger context is that the context is that if if i have a problem in my eye i would go to an ent specialist i will i will certainly go to a qualified person but but if i if i need a carpenter or plumber i don't ask for his his or her certificate so at larger level also there is no there is not a there is no direct help to have a, uh, a, a certificate there is no additional benefits so that is a challenge and that we 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 try to address that particular challenge Sir, one more question is that, like for example, I hope I am audible. Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Yeah, sir, I was asking, like for example, number of students are. Now again, there is some problem with your audio. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Sir, so there might be number of students who might be taking the entire thing, right? But yeah. somehow they are not uh, doing into that particular the skilling uh, job, whatever they have taken the training in, like maybe carpentry, maybe plumbing or whatsoever, right? So right. do you have such kind of people data that they have taken training, but they are not doing anything, or else you target the other population then after? Correct. Yeah. So there are many students, as I said, there are forty percent of trainees. They are not uh, carpenter or plumber. even though they had a formal training in carpentry and plumbing so and i think 80% of these 40% people they would have done graduation because they were tenth paid so they had one year so they came to iti took one year also in the tribal area uh, there is a scholarship component so there are many students who just come for the scholarship part so that is also one of the issues But we do. We ask them again that you should join the profession as you have taken the training. Is of not having nothing. We we in fact we try to interact with them for at least one year. We have our supervisor. We do contact them and we also pro try to provide them support wherever they are working. But that is limited for one year. After one year, it becomes very difficult and. Uh, there are also larger economic uh, i would say considerations see for example they generally get salary even if they get formal job they get salary of around 13 14 15 000 per month now if some someone who is who is living in maybe same panchmal district or in mesana district and uh, if he has to go to the ahmedabad or surat for 15 000 he would prefer 10 000 but would like to stay at his home only so if they are doing some agricultural labor and if, even if he is earning 10000 economically it would be beneficial for him to remain in the village rather than going to the city so that that economic aspects because these sectors are not formal sector that is a larger challenge of placing them objective behind asking this question was that as you know any of the projects and the city like the government also taking initiative So it was like 
what is the output so that is very nicely answered to all my questions so thank you so that i hope all the students have also taken uh, good lessons from the entire uh, case studies and the entire deep in depth knowledge of your all activities projects which is doing the csr into pd like industries so i myself like to Uh, thanks, sir. Yeah. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank I you. hope I am again audible. Yeah, yeah, in bits and pieces. <laughs> But anyway, I could understand. Uh, sorry, I don't know. I think similar there is a thing. So maybe because of that reason, I am not so clearly audible, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So, sir, uh, let me give you a formal uh, a vote of thanks uh, on behalf of Public Institute of Social Work. Dean Dr. Dutsadi Skorla, faculty members, and myself, we have to make, extend our very heartfelt our chief guest, Mr. Deepen Kanji Bhai, who spared his valuable uh, time from his uh, from his busy schedule. Today we had an opportunity to hear to hear him and his thought process. This was surely going to encourage us in future. Thank you. Apart from this, thank you for enlightening us with in-depth knowledge of skill development and the CSR skilling journey of PD Light Industries, under which the different projects. Thank you so much, sir, for sparing your valuable time for us on this short notice. And thank you so much, sir. Uh, initially, also I was like not able to hear you. And it was completely live, so I could not give you even properly a welcome address. So in the last, I would say sorry that I could not say uh, I could not complete my uh, welcome address. Uh, so again, I'm sorry, but again, maybe next time we would meet uh, physically. You may come to the faculty uh, and to address the students and address the uh, teachers, and we may get more information about the CSR projects and. Yes, sir. Whatever is going on in other industries, too. So thank you, thank you so sure, much sure. for coming, for coming at this short notice. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Our pleasure, sir. Thank you.